Welcome back to Utah Stories. So today on the program, we have with us um, both Troy Mendenhall, who's usually producing Utah Stories. He, he came across this story and he's researched it, so he knows more about it than I do, as well as Lisa Bayhash, who is the co-founder of Save Our Wasatch Back Dark Skies. Close enough. <laughs> Save Wasatch Back Dark Skies. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for being on. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so the issue we're we're talking about today is, um, you know, I think living in Utah, whether you're LDS or non-LDS, the temples are really wonderful to see. They're beautiful buildings. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to, to, you know, drive along I-15 and see the temples. But proposing a temple in a rural area where most people move there for the natural beauty, the farms, and just being away from it all, They've proposed the temple into Heber. Heber's actually grown a lot. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the spillover from Park City has come into Heber, and now they're proposing to build a temple. Tell me, why is it you're against the proposal? Yeah, so we're not against the temple. I want to be perfectly clear about that. We're very supportive of a temple uh, in the area, for sure. It's more the location and the size and scope of what's been proposed. So that's that's what we'll talk about. Um it's in the county, Wasatch County, which is right, you know, obviously uh, Heber City is part of the county, but the proposed location is in the county bordering Heber City. And uh, the area is beautiful. If anybody comes to the Wasatch back area, it's absolutely beautiful. We have great views of the Timpanogas. Um, we have beautiful night skies. And the reason we're opposed to that location is because it's a rural residential area. That lot is zoned RA1 for residential agriculture one acre lots. So it's about a 17 to 18 acre lot uh, that the, the LDS church has purchased. And the temple they're proposing for that is going to be about 210 feet tall, 88,000 square feet, parking lot of 250, 400, excuse me, 454 spots. That's a commercial building. Mm -hmm. That is not a rural residential type building. So there's um, no commercial, other commercial buildings no, in that? No, no. This is a residential area. The temple will be surrounded by residential, mm -hmm. uh, not commercial buildings. And mm -hmm. I think the community really thought it was going to go up on the hill off of I-40 uh, by UVU, mm -hmm. which would have been perfect. Very prominent, up on a hill, uh, you know, kind of a beacon that I think that the church would want for that area. Yeah. versus in a rural residential area. So we've got a lot of concerns with light pollution, uh, the overall size and our ridge line or view shed, it's called. Uh, so our ability to see the, the, um, the mountains that surround us, there's water issues and there's traffic issues. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like you pointed out, Troy, when you have a, a reason and, and a community and a reason why you've moved there, it's like why why would you want to transform that into changing the zoning to commercial and make that exception because of one predominant religion yeah and 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 I would assume that it's not everybody there is LDS and and even if they were why would you, why would you think that that would necessarily be a good idea yeah so by the 2020 US uh, religion census the area in 2020 was about 50-50 LDS, non-LDS. I would assume it's a little bit less even now with uh, all of the move-ins, as they call us, in the area mm -hmm. being predominantly non-LDS. So you're absolutely right. Uh, and what we're looking for is the church to recognize that they need to consider the neighbors and the impact that they're going to have on us. So again, we're not opposing a temple. And in fact, if that has to be the location, why not something around 100 feet tall and a little smaller in size? They have temples of that scale all over the U.S., so it's not like it's out of the ordinary. It's something that they're very used to building so you'd as be, well. So you'd be fine as long as Absolutely. it weren't 315 feet, just like 100 feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the tree line around the area is 70 feet. Uh, the maximum building size for the county is 35 feet. Right, so that's primarily homes, and in order for them to build a 210-foot temple, 
Uh, they have to do a legislative development agreement, which they're currently working on, or a conditional use permit. And that's kind of where the rub comes in, is you're not following the county codes, zoning codes, as they've been established. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um you mentioned that there's there's water issues too yeah so the lot uh sits upon the aquifer one of the largest aquifers in the area uh, the water from that aquifer is uh associated with the wells right next uh right adjacent to that lot and those wells are used to feed the water to heber city so it has to be Something along the lines of 90 to 100 million gallons have to be pumped off of the land in order for the construction to occur. Uh, the church, I believe, is proposing a foundation that's roughly 40 feet deep. 90 to 100 million? Yeah. yeah. Whoa, yeah. that's a lot of water. Yeah, and the foundation of 40 feet, the water table's at 10 feet. Oh, wow. Okay, so they have to pump the water off to do the construction, and then they'll have to do continuous pumping to keep that foundation sound. That just seems really problematic. Do you know why they didn't build it on the hill like you? Uh, we don't know. I, I have been told that they were, were reviewing 16 sites throughout the uh, that area, that general area. I don't know why this site specifically was selected. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have questions, Troy? I don't have any questions, uh, I mean, yet. I, I know that we, we had talked a little bit about this, and uh, I, I, I want to kind of, I would want to approach it from my both sides because I used to be like a, a believing LDS person. I know what temples mean to uh, to all these people. I also grew up in Boise, Idaho, where um, <laughs> when they built that temple there in the 80s, we had heard uh, that people would line up there with their guns and shoot at the Angel Moroni, oh. and chunks of the statue. So the reason why I bring that up is because this isn't this isn't an anti-Mormon, this isn't an anti-religion thing. Like Lisa said, it's not about opposing the building of a temple. It's it's just making sure that uh, that when it's done, it's it's done with everybody, considering everybody. You know, mm -hmm. the believers and the non-believers. Um, it's it's not necessarily like we we had mentioned before, Cody, Wyoming. Um, if anybody's paying attention to that, that's basically like a city divided um, between um, between you know, members and non-members fighting over this temple. And, uh, and, and of course, nobody wants that. And so it's like, where, where can that middle ground be? And, and this was actually the first time I'd actually heard of a proposal being like, Hey, let's, we're not, we're okay with the temple being there, but maybe a different location, or if it's going to be in that location, maybe a little smaller. Right. I've even heard of, in terms of light pollution, I've even heard of, uh, options to downlight, um, certain, uh, things. So it's not so bright at night that it, it obstructs from the stars and the views and everything. All of these things are, are, are options. And I think it's just a matter of exploring it without just putting your, your foot in the sand and just being like, okay, we're, we're going to go forward with this no matter what. And I mm -hmm. think that it's important to hear all sides of the, of the debate. And yeah. unfortunately, I think because of the state we live in, this might be a, a, a hot, hot topic or hot, hot button thing here that because of the state we live in, because of the, the church that's proposing this temple, the, a lot of the times the voices of the people who are opposed to the temple are either number one buried and not heard or number two are automatically seen as anti-Mormon and mm -hmm. it's just not the case. Yeah, I, 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 we certainly feel the latter uh, that we're anti-Mormon, which is not the case at all. We recognize where we live, uh, but we all came here for the beauty, beauty, the beauty, the na nature, the rural environment. Where did you come from? Michigan. Oh yeah. Michigan. Yeah. So, um, we don't have big mountains like this out in, out in Michigan, but it's also a beautiful state. But really, we're again, we're not against the temple. We're not against the religion. What we want is something that more appropriately fits into the area. Mm -hmm. uh, light pollution is a big issue. It's a big issue nationwide. Yeah. Um, you know, it's roughly, I think, only 20% now of the country. It can actually see the galaxies above us in the night skies. Yeah, we're about to have an eclipse, and the yeah. only places you can go are yeah. the really rural areas. Yeah. And, and uh, it's a, it becomes a reason to go to these rural areas. It probably it's I'm sure yeah. it stimulates the economies of these places. And yeah, and unfortunately, the first thing that the the church applied for was to change the outdoor lighting ordinance in Wasatch County. Our lighting ordinance had been in place for 20 years. It didn't allow up lighting. Uh, earlier this year in March and April, that changed when the county adopted a new. Uh, lighting ordinance and we now allow up lighting amongst other things and the, and you'll hear oh we have now a very progressive lighting ordinance well 
when you consider the number of regulations and controls, yes, they're very uh, progressive, but when you put numbers or the limits to them, they're very not progressive. They're going to allow city level lighting, like Salt Lake City level lighting, versus being consistent with rural, residential, agriculture, pr- preservation land, etc. That's too bad. Yeah. So and, I mean, you you also know. I also know a little bit about the Dark Skies Initiative. That uh, when it, when the skies are dark, birds. Uh, thrive a lot better than when they're lit up because birds can, all animals yeah. can, can sleep better. And yeah, so it definitely has an impact on wildlife. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Salt Lake City area and, and the Wasatch Valley have over 400 migrating birds, 400 species. Um, so light definitely impacts their ability to migrate. Um and it in fact it affects humans as well and our sleep patterns circadian rhythms and so forth so there's a lot of impact of light pollution and i think we need to get used to understanding that light is light pollution is pollution and mm-hmm. it's something that has to be addressed unfortunately the code that they adopted earlier this year isn't just for the temple it's for the entire county oh really and you're talking about a county that is primarily preservation land and again, rural. Well, what are nature. your what are your chances of getting this defeated or at least moved to another site? Well, we're going to keep fighting um, and keep looking to be understood. And uh, is it a county board or a community council? It's a county council planning or? commission and a county council. Okay. Okay. And is it? Do you feel like your chances are pretty good? Well. All I can say that is, unfortunately, the majority of the officials are of the LDS faith, mm-hmm. right? So I think they're looking to ho- probably uh, enable the project versus holding themselves accountable to the county codes. That's just my opinion on it. Um, I think we've appealed to local members of the church uh, best we could. In, in other words, uh, we're your neighbors, we're going to continue to be your neighbors. Why don't we work together on some type of uh, design in between? Yeah, uh, and, what's I, and proposed? I, I would think like if you could exclude that the the religiosity of the building and just say if yeah. this was a big box store, of course you wouldn't want to have it here. That's right. If this was any kind of building at all, non affiliated with anything at all, would you want this building to be here? And if the answer is no, then why yeah. should you make an exclusion just because it's a temple? Right. It's- and we've done our homework. We understand the importance of temples to the faith. That's that's not the concern. That's not the issue for us. And we're constant wherever we engage on social media uh, to make sure that everybody understands that. So mm-hmm. uh, I would want, want the blessings of a temple as well. That's perfectly fine. But let's make it fit into the community. Yeah. So you, you mentioned that you have been reaching out to your neighbors, reaching out to your fellow Heber um, mm-hmm. neighbors. What kind of a response have you gotten both from um, members of the church and non-members alike in terms of just your um, your goal, sure, your mission? Sure, it's, it's mixed, most definitely mixed. There are, I would say, a great deal of people that have a similar understanding and thought process that we do. And I would say the members are probably split I don't know what percentage they're split in, but we hear very strict on the on one side, temple, got to have it, brings blessings to everybody, period, make it higher, light it up even more, <laughs> and then all the way to, no, we agree that it needs to fit into the community, down light it, make it smaller, let's be good neighbors, let's behave Christ-like. So we get the whole gamut. I don't know what those percentages are in the whole county, but... Uh, we engage with everybody, and but that's kind of the gamut that we see. With, with those reactions, have you, has much of it been vitriolic in nature, like anger? S- uh, some, a little bit. It's not. It's not dominant. You yeah. know, I think you you always have extreme believers in anything. Uh, so we see a little bit of that, but nothing that that is concerning. I think the majority are truly uh, care about the county, care about the rural nature. Um, and want to do do something that's more appropriate. Yeah, and and I think like to touch on the, the light pollution thing. I think it's it's more than just oh we want to see the stars, right? I mean I, from people people who have grown up in Utah uh, or anywhere rural rural where you can see the stars. It's it's just um, 
it's just so different because uh, last year I went on a canyon drive with some uh, some friends who were visiting from New York and a few places out east where there was just so much light pollution. As soon as we got into the canyons and just kind of went up a little bit and the clouds cl- clouds cleared, yeah. their mouths dropped open. Their eyes were wide as huge. You, they, they just could not fathom that the stars were so visible out here yeah. and then you know same thing like I, like i said i i was practicing mormon i went on a mission to ireland and i remember this story i don't know why i remember it so well but there was this lady i met and she lived in belfast and if you know anything about ireland it rains all the time it's always cloudy <laughs> she didn't she came to utah and visited in moab utah and saw the stars there and she wept yeah. and so it's like it's mm-hmm. into to your point it's like why you know utah is one of those the last few places in the country that you can see views of the galaxy and and it's it's breathtaking it's amazing and it's yeah. like i i think it's a, a bigger a, a bigger importance than maybe just oh we want to yeah. see the stars and in fact the state really markets that astrotourism mm-hmm. dark sky certified dark sky places a mm-hmm. number of uh, state parks are uh, state and local parks are certified dark sky locations. Uh, for uh, for us, as example, we have the Jordanell State Park. More than likely, they're going to lose their certification. Wasatch uh, Mountain State Park was trying to be certified. They're not going to be able to certify. Soldier Hollow is quite bright. The Temple would be quite bright. Uh, and it's it's just a shame. And in fact, we have a brand new state license plate that says dark skies right on it. Oh, wow. So on one hand, we want to use it to bring tourism. But on the other hand, we don't want to protect four night skies in our development. And yeah. there is a tremendous amount of development going on in the Wasatch back area. Yeah. Well, beauty, beauty by omission. Yeah. <laughs> don't put yeah. more stuff in to make a place thinking yeah. it's going to be more beautiful. Yeah. And that's the theme of one of the one of the films we're showing at our screening of Utah Stories documentaries um, at Bruvies November 2nd. We're showing a film about the gondola proposal up uh, Little Cottonwood Canyon. Okay. Um, also, it's like one of the most breathtaking, stunning canyons in the world. The greatest snow on earth is up the top of the canyon. And they, they're they proposing to build a $2 billion gondola, which would devastate the beauty underneath, especially at the in the back country. And I think this is kind of a similar thing. It's just like you don't want to build too much yeah. junk in a beautiful place because it's beautiful for what's not there, for what the natural beauty that exists there. Yeah. And and two points to that I want to make is is kind of going back to the Moab. I mean, like you've mentioned in your arguments about the gondola going through Little Cottonwood is similar to like if we had a gondola going to <laughs> to um, the Delicate Arch, right? I mean, yeah, can you imagine building a giant yeah. building with bright lights and right, yeah, right, put, at the, right at the Delicate Arch? It's, it's a similar aspect, um, a, a similar aspect to that. And I think... Um, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just I think our our development minded um, state. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, we love our wide freeways and we love our infrastructure, but there and we love our temples, of course. But there's yeah. a place for that kind of stuff, and there's a place where it, it yeah. shouldn't exist. And I so. think you would find in the Wasatch back area, there's tremendous amount of development going on, and you probably have half of the area that supports the development due to economic. Uh, you know, positive economic effects, but then you have the other half that really want to preserve the rural nature and the beauty of the area. And I think there's a way to do it through responsible development. I'm just not seeing that as part of the discussion. Yeah. Right. And um, unfortunately, I think maybe in 30 years, you'll look back and see that Wasatch back area has become Salt Lake City too. Let's hope not, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, Lisa, thanks for fighting the fight and being on the yeah. program. Really yeah, appreciate thanks it. for having me on. Appreciate any chance to get the word out. If people want to know more, you can go to SaveWasatchBackDarkSkies.org. And if you want to uh, get involved or understand or contact us directly, it's SaveWasatchBack at gmail.com. Save Wasatch, Wasatch back back. Dark skies dot org. Yeah, it's a All little right. long, but... Yeah, uh, but it's a, it's a good fight because I, I definitely value that. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you'd like to get a ticket to our upcoming um, film premieres, we're actually going to premiere three films at Bruvies November 2nd. The tickets are selling really fast. It's the first event we've put on since COVID, and uh, it's at Bruvies. We're partnering with them. The tickets are 10 bucks for a regular seat or $20 for a VIP. And uh, we encourage you to go out and, and buy your seat and reserve it before they all sell out. 
which is almost certain to happen now. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.